What's going on y'all, it's your man Pristine back with another video. Welcome to the full Pristine review for the LG Q7 Plus. Let's waste no time and let's dive right in. Now, one of the most important specs for this phone being the price, 350 bucks. I think that this is an excellent, excellent mid-range device that LG has put forth um, for us to, uh, to get our hands on and enjoy. I really feel like the best Components from the LG G7 Thin Q. Some of the best things about that phone have all been placed here. Um, of course, you know, this being a mid range device, I mean, there are certain areas about it that could have been a little better. But I mean, I don't think that it's anything that um, would warrant, state, uh, you know, you know, to state whether or not, to question whether or not this is a bad device. This, in my personal opinion, is an excellent device, especially given the price point. Um, now, we've got. Um, a Snapdragon 450 processor, uh, Quad HD, Full HD Plus panel, um, full 1080p, which it looks it looks simply amazing. Uh, we've got four gigs of RAM, 64 gigs of onboard storage that can be expanded up to two terabytes. All right. Um, so at first, you know, I did I once did knock the device for the Snapdragon uh, 450 processor, but again, ladies and gentlemen. You know, we, we live in a day and age nowadays where things aren't like they used to be before, back in the day where there were two different devices and there was like a clear difference between one or the other. Um, the Snapdragon 450 performs very well, in my personal opinion, and I'm actually surprised at how well it performs. And so I can no longer, you know, it was, it, was, it was a bit of an eyebrow raiser when I first got the device because I thought that this device, considering the fact that it's being marketed as a mid-range device, was going to have one of the 600 series Snapdragon processors and it liked like the 625, the Snapdragon 630 or the 636, which the 636 seems to be um, a more common mid-range uh, uh, processor that's in a lot of these mid-range devices. Even the Snapdragon 660. Uh, the 660 is a little bit more of a newer device, and we're starting to see that popping up in different mid-range devices as well. Uh, we see that in the BlackBerry Key 2 um, and a couple of other devices. So I was under the impression that once I saw this phone, and read some of the specs that it was going to have one of those processors in it. But to my surprise, LG decided to go with the 450 and, um, and, uh, it's, it's, it's good. It's good. And, you know, check out the comparison video. I did a video comparing this to its bigger brother, the LG G7 Thin Q, which is LG's flagship right now of 2018. And, uh, you can look at you. I think you'll be very impressed on how this phone stacked up against the, uh, the LG G7 Thin Q. So get this device in your hands before you before you judge it. Okay. Now the build quality, um, the build quality is solid in my personal opinion. Here, let me go ahead and take this case off. So with the build quality, I mean we've got an unspecified grade of glass on the front and the back. I'm not sure if it's Gorilla Glass um, three or if it's just you know uh, 2.5D uh, art glass on the front and the back. But nonetheless, I mean, I feel like the construction is very good on this device. I mean, it feels really good in the hand. I mean, you're getting a 5.5 inch display on a 5.2 inch footprint. And so, you know, the phone is very small in stature, but it's a big performer. I love the Moroccan blue color, um, that this, that this is in. And, um, yeah, it just looks really, it looks really good. We've got aluminum and an aluminum frame around the sides, the top and the bottom. Um, and so the phone, you know, it's 156 grams. I mean, it's, 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 it's a lightweight for sure. Um, actually, my, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm thinking of another device. I'm thinking of my Moto Z3. Um, but this device, I mean, for sure, I mean, this is smaller than the Z3. So the Z3 is six inches. This is 5.5. Um, but it feels really good in the hand. It's nice and narrow. And again, like I said, we've got that big 5.5 inch display. As you can see at the top, there's no notch. Um, so I'm sure a lot of you guys will be thrilled about that. Um, but yeah, I got to say, you know, the build quality and the overall construction of this device is very good. I like the fact that on the, the you know, on the corners at the edges, they're rounded as opposed to um, uh, very sharp in the corners. So it's a very comfortable fit when holding it in the hand. And so I like the ergonomic build of this particular device. All right. So I got to give a thumbs up to the build quality. You know, the build quality is solid in my personal opinion, and the phone feels really good. And it's lightweightness, um, even though I know that's not a word, it's lightweight and it makes it very easy to wield and, and, and manage in the hand. All right. Now, the overall performance 
As I mentioned, we've got a Snapdragon 450 processor, three, uh, four gigs of RAM, 64 gigs of onboard storage. We've got an Adreno GPU um, uh, 506, and we've got an octa-core CPU that's powering uh, this thing. And, you know, things have been buttery smooth in my personal opinion. I mean, no lag at all whatsoever. I mean, there's been some, 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 some little stutters, like you run into a lot of that stuff every now and then. Um, so I guess, I guess you can say that's a little bit laggy, you know, like when you're scrolling, like the scrolling effect, but I mean, it's nothing that it, it, it's nothing that's so, so bad or so much to where it just completely ruins the experience for you. Okay. I mean, so definitely, you know, you're going to get a little, a little bit of that here and there, but it, it's nothing, it's nothing at all. That's too, too, uh, uh, uh too distracting. You know, it's nothing that's going to make you want to turn off the device. And I've only noticed that just really here in like the Google now, you know, like when I'm scrolling up and down, um, for the most part, that's pretty smooth. But when I have seen that little bit of a stutter like that, it's always been here. I haven't really seen that anywhere else on the device. And so again, just, you know, navigating through the phone, opening applications, um, scrolling through my recents. I mean, the RAM management seems to be pretty solid. I mean, so I got to say the overall the overall performance out of, out of a, on a scale from one to 10, the overall performance for this phone, I'd give it like a 7.5 or an 8. And that's pretty damn good. You know, that 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 exceeded my expectations. You know, because like when I saw that 450 processor, I was just thinking, oh man, this phone, it's gonna be this, this, this ain't gonna be too good. You know, but it exceeded my expectations. It's a top performer, and it's actually one of my top, it's one of my favorite phones right now, just because of how light it is and how snappy it is. I mean, it just does whatever I needed to do in an absolute hurry. It feels good in the hand. It's not cumbersome and really big like the new guy on the block here, the Note 9. But um, hey, God, look at the difference there, right? Look at that. This is 5.5. The Note is 6.4. Man, the Note is just beast in the little Q7 Plus. But that's the Note. You know, the Note is supposed to do that. <laughs> you know, so performance, it's good in my personal opinion. Now, the cameras, be sure to check out the dedicated camera review that I did for this phone. It's called LG Q7 Plus forward slash the camera. I keep the, the title nice and simple. There you can see still shot images that were captured with this camera. Um, 16 megapixel primary sensor on the front or on the back, I mean, on the front, we've got an eight megapixel sensor. And I gotta say, the cameras are really solid. They're, 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 they're solid performing cameras, you know, for everything that you're getting in this device. And so I know that some people have questioned me like, oh, well, why would you get this phone when you got the G7 Thin Q? Well, like I said, it's like, why not? The G7 Thin Q is the flagship, you know, this is LG's mid-range device. And I wanted to get my hands on the mid-range device just to see how it's stacked up against the flagship and it stacks up very well now in the camera department there's a little bit of a drop off if you go with the q7 plus but that's not necessarily a bad thing because the image the image and the video quality is still very very solid now it may not be as good as it is on the flagship nor can you expect it to be because that's why there's a difference between mid-range and flagship and so on the flagship on the g7 thin q you got that secondary wide angle lens you got a few more bells and whistles and options to customize and play with in the camera app that you may not have here but nonetheless the camera here on the q7 plus is still very very solid in my personal opinion so be sure to check out that video and let me know what you guys think about that in the comments all right now the battery life we've got a 3000 milliamp hour non-removable battery again you know this phone is small in stature you know, so I wasn't anticipating the battery being extremely huge. I mean, you know, I can even say, oh, well, they could have at least given us a 3,300 milliamp hour battery. But the Snapdragon 450 processor is optimized very well for how you use this device. And so it's really good on battery consumption. So even though it's got 3,000 milliamps, I've had no problem getting through a full day and still having some change left over. I mean, so I got to say the battery on this phone is actually pretty solid. OK, and you've got, you know, battery customizations and things that you can utilize. Be mindful that when you do op when you when you uh, uh, enable some of the battery optimizations, there's going to be functions and features that are going to get disabled. So make sure you check that out so that you're not, you know, you can choose, you know, what you're comfortable with to help you save some battery life. Do your own optimization. If you're not using these particular things, turn them off because they fry your battery. What you talking about, Pristine? I'm so glad you asked. Turn off Wi-Fi. If you're not using it because it's always looking for a connection to connect to, turn off Bluetooth if you're not using it because it's always looking for a device to connect to. Turn off auto sync 
if you don't need you know notifications going off every two seconds from all five or six of your different email accounts that fries your battery turn off GPS if you're not using GPS why do you need to have it on you just want people tracking you and being able to locate you wherever you are I know I don't you know what I mean so turn that off unless you absolutely need to and you'll notice a significant difference in your battery life as well so those are some just some quick little personal optimizations that you can do without even having to touch the battery optimizations that come preloaded in the phone but if you need to utilize those things to help you get some battery staying power then those things are available to you okay so battery battery life in this phone solid no problems all right now additional features you know, it's an LG device. You guys know that LG is one of my favorite devices, our favorite brands, and so I'm very familiar with LG devices. Again, when you go into settings, I like the fact that it gives you that tab view as opposed to just that 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 plain that plain Jane generic old what we're used to with every Android device uh, 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 settings list. I like the tab view. You know what I mean? And, you know, I just like having the option to be able to switch to this and have everything in its own category. OK, I like the facial recognition. The facial recognition is very responsive. It's very quick. We've got a speedy uh, uh, fingerprint sensor. Um, I like the fact that we've got quick memo. And so even though we don't have an S pen where we can write memos down, you know, with uh, with the with the pen or a stylus that comes in the phone, you can utilize your finger. OK. And, you know, if you want to make a note real quick, then you can just use your finger to draw. Choose the pin there. OK. And so, you know, you don't necessarily need a pin. You know what I mean? You can use your finger. You can make some notes, jot down some quick little memos or something like that if you need to. Um, if you want to erase that, you just go ahead and hit the erase and just use your finger to erase it. You know, so, you know, little things like that, to me, I, I like those little things. I mean, you know, we've got one-handed mode here where you swipe across the bottom. Wait, is that how you enable it? I know what's on here. Typically, it's, oh, maybe I have it turned off. That's what it is. But we do have one-handed mode. I mean, so if the 5.5 inches does get a little cumbersome for you, then, hey, you can um, you can you know swipe the screen in one handed mode from the left or the right of the screen, whatever's comfortable for you, depending on which hand you hold your device in. I like the fact that the new brightness feature that we got on the LG G7 Thin Q, taking the phone up to a thousand nits, has also been implemented here. Okay, when you tap the little brightness setting right there, I don't believe this is a thousand nits. I think it's eight hundred, but still, it is extremely bright. It is very bright and you just tap it a couple of times and it takes you right back to your normal setting, which I've got this phone on 50 percent because the screen, it gets very bright and you're not going to have any trouble seeing this device. And if you do, then you can just go ahead and hit that, um, you know, hit that, uh, that, that, that brightness enhancement. And uh, you definitely shouldn't have any problems seeing the screen there. I like the fact that we've got the 3.5 millimeter headphone jack here with the 32 bit Hi-Fi quad DAC. I like the fact that we also have the DTS-X surround sound to complement that 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 uh, that Hi-Fi quad DAC. I mean, so the music capabilities and options and controls and customizations that you have with this device are absolutely phenomenal. Again, another one of the best features of the LG G7 Thin Q implemented here on the LG Q7 Plus. I like the fact that. We've got Type C. I mean, you know, with fast charging, we've seen in 2018 some mid, some mid range and a couple of budget devices that had some decent specs and they seem to be pretty promising. Not to say that they were bad devices, but they were still rocking micro USB. And it's like, yo, we're in 2018. Who's rocking with micro USB anymore? That's a thing of the past. Get that out of here. Type C, all the things like my man Marquez Brownlee said. OK, Type C, all the things, everything, budget, mid range, flagship, all that. Type C it. Stop playing. You know what I'm saying? So I like the fact that that's implemented here on the LG Q7 Plus. Um, and so those are some of the most notable things that I like about the Q7 Plus. Um, and so, you know, my overall final thoughts, I mean, you know, who's this phone for? If you don't want to spend an arm and a leg and you want a good quality device that's going to do all the things that you need it to do, it's up to par with all the 2018 uh, uh, specifications and 2018 features and functions, then hey, the LG Q7 Plus is here for you. I mean, you've got a small in stature, big screen device with no notch. 
Okay, you've got a beautiful full HD plus panel. Okay, you've got that hi-fi quad DAC to complement it with the DTSX surround sound. I mean, you've got facial recognition, fingerprint sensor. I mean, you know, you've got, you know, nice buttery smooth performance. I mean, even the speaker, the speaker, uh, it hasn't been said that this speaker has that same uh, boom box or speaker effect that the LG G7 Thin Q has, but the speaker on this phone sounds damn good. It sounds very comparable. And so I wonder if it is the same technology or similar technology that's in the G7 Thin Q, but they just kind of scaled it back a little bit just because it's like, okay, you know, we can't give you all the flagship bells and whistles, but I'm actually blown away by the sound quality of this speaker. And it's just a little bottom firing speaker. Right here, we do not have dual. We don't have dual speakers on this device, um, so the, the the sound quality this little thing puts out is actually pretty stunning. You know, so that's another thing that I like about the device. So all in all, you know, you're getting a really complete package here at a very affordable price tag. And so, you know, if you're on a budget, hey, you can get this device. You know, this device is for you. If you can afford to spend a thousand bucks, hint, hint but you don't want to because you don't see a need in it, then, hey, this is a great option for you if you want a great phone. You know, I like the color scheme, that Moroccan blue. This phone is beautiful. This phone turns heads. Pretty much everywhere I go, if this phone is in my hand, people are asking me, what is that? And I'm like, oh, baby, look here, man. That's that, that's that new LG Q7. Not the Q7, the Q7. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm talking about? That LG Q7. Yeah, that's what it is. So overall, I mean, this phone is a great device, great package, great price, great value for everything that you're getting. I can definitely recommend this phone to anybody. It's one of my favorite devices right now. All right. That's all I got, ladies and gentlemen, for the LG Q7 Plus. If you like this video, you know what to do. Smash that thumbs up button. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe to expose yourself to tons of videos that I've done like this one. And definitely stay tuned for much more video content to come. Be sure to hit that notification bell so that whenever I upload a video, you, 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 and yes, you, you can all be the first to watch the video and voice your opinions, your thoughts, your comments, questions, all those things. And as, sure, and as soon as I get some time, because I'm ever so busy, baby, I'll be sure to contact you as soon as I possibly can. All right? So thank you guys all for tuning in. Much love to all of you guys, my subscribers. All of y'all all, all all that have been rocking with me for a minute, much love. I appreciate it. Those, all, all of you new subscribers that found my channel or somebody shared a video and you liked what you saw and you subbed, man, I thank you so, so very much. You guys are much appreciated. I'm going to continue to do my thing by getting my hands on these devices, putting out these types of videos to lace you guys with as much information as possible because I do this to help you guys make an informed decision on what your next smartphone purchase may be. I love doing this. I get a kick out of it. It's it's just a way to get my voice out there to help a lot of you guys out. And that's what I feel like my purpose in life is to do, to be a blessing to others. That's all I'm trying to do here. All right. And I appreciate the fact that you guys allow me to do this because I couldn't do this without you guys. All right. So much love. Definitely stay safe. Get spiritually fit in 2018 because we're definitely living in the last days. And keep it pristine in every aspect of your lives. I'll catch you guys in the next video. I'm your man, Pristine, bringing you the content. This is the new, quietly released LG Q7 Plus. We out. Catch y'all in the next one.